What's up guys, Leg Day back again to shoot some more educational bullets into your ready bodies. And today we're going to be discussing another one of the teams that was at Shanghai Masters. We're going to discuss the Guangzhou Charge. This is a video in a series. There are three others, one of which is not available yet. You'll be waiting on Kenobi's channel for info on the Chengdu Hunters. I have covered the Shanghai Dragons previously on this channel. And I'll link Geo's channel where you have a video about the Hangzhou Spark at Shanghai Masters. Ready and waiting for your eyeballs to dig into. Anyway, we have five things that I think that I have learned about Guangzhou Charge at Shanghai Masters, and I'm going to share them with you, so buckle in. So for number one, we're going to start off nice, because we are benevolent spectators audience, and we're going to talk about Krong, coming in from O2 Blast, previously the off-tank there. He's been picked up by the Guangzhou Charge as their off-tank, and we saw him play a lot of Sigma over the course of this tournament, and I think he's actually put on a pretty good showing. We hadn't seen him play much Sigma previously. And I think that if Sigma remains meta, Kron could be an asset. I think his skill would definitely is more towards the Diva and the Zaya, which could become Vogue as new patches hit before the 2020 Overwatch League season starts. And of course, through the season's continuum as well, those patches will be hitting now and then to really shake up the metagame, change up who's on top. And his synergy with Rio looks okay. One thing Kron does need, though, is he needs to be communicating with his new team a little bit more to try and get defensive cooldowns forced out before he uses Gravitic Flux. Often, we see Gravitic Flux used to try and engage, which can force out quite a bit from the enemy team, but doesn't really guarantee any kills because May's going to use Ice Block, Reaper can Wraith away, you can see Moira do the same thing, Fortify is available for the Orisa, doesn't do a huge amount of damage. You could have a lot more kill potential if there's more communication from Krong and his team. However, for number two, from mild praise, we have to go to moderate disparagement, and this concerns the other new pickup of Neptuno, the new main support previously of the Philadelphia Fusion, who the Guangzhou Charge have picked up, and he was played for two of the three maps that the Guangzhou Charge played over the course of this tournament. He was in for Nepal, and he was in for King's Row as well, with Chara being substituted in for Hanamura, and it seemed like when Chara was in, there was a lot more consistency in the rotations that were being done by the Guangzhou Charge, or seemed to be moving very much together, even if it was uh, easy for Jinmu to pick them apart with very little trouble on the fire, but we'll get to that later. I've got to make a couple of excuses here for Neptuno. I feel like he definitely hasn't had enough time to really gel with his team, hasn't had enough time to really become a huge part of the comm structure that is required to be an Overwatch League main support. Evidently, he has the skills, as Philadelphia Fusion has proven with his track record. And I feel like there may have been some time that he had to spend getting a visa to go to Guangzhou, to go to Shanghai for this tournament as well. That means that he will have had less scrim time compared to Char, of course, who's been with the team for a year, but less scrim time with all the new acquisitions as well, like Krong, and trying to synergize with Rio as well to figure out how frontline and backline are really going to manage an engagement. And I feel like over the regular season, this is going to improve a lot from Neptuno. The third thing that we learned about Guangzhou is that they may have a problem with meta slaving and not taking their opposition into proper account. Throughout the three maps that they played at Shanghai Masters, we didn't see much divergence from a May and Reaper strategy, one that is two metas old now, as of course during the finals we saw a lot more of the Reaper and Doomfist, and occasionally Bastion as well. And of course Chengdu Hunters just always wants to play Pharah because that's the best place to play Jinmu, and it seems like Guangzhou, they were very set on using specific May wall rotations, as well as using them to obscure vision and to try and isolate people. And because they were much better at those, which were evidently very highly practiced, they lacked a lot of flexibility when it came to just trying to get Jimmy off to Farah. We only saw direct counters to Farah in the second half of King's Row, the last map they had available, and that seemed more like desperation, because we saw Chengdu bring out something like a Junkrat on first point, so they counterpicked that strategy the first time they'd really done a counterpick throughout the entire tournament, and then they kept a McCree out, when Jinmu moved over onto Farah, and they forced Jinmu to swap over. The second that Jinmu is forced to swap away from that Farah, he has to go onto Mei, where he's a little bit less comfortable, and he has a little bit less potential to pop off, and for Evil Tile to really facilitate everyone by having some safety on that Mercy, Chengdu seemed a lot weaker, and I feel like they really could use their half times better on the side of Guangzhou to really figure out how Chengdu are playing so well, and what you can do about it. I feel like there's going to have to be a lot more preparation for specific teams from Guangzhou if they're going up against teams with specific strengths exactly like Chengdu. 
Point number four is kind of an extension of point number two, and that's for at the start of the Owl season, we may reasonably expect to see more Chara than Neptuna, because while they had Chara in on Hanamura on both attack and defense, even though they didn't actually manage to cap the point on their attack, they were a lot cleaner on their rotations, and more importantly, on their disengagements as well. On defense, they often took themselves out of situations where the fight wasn't in their favor to try and take a more favorable fight, maybe on the objective or away from any encroaching elements, like a Symmetra Photon Barrier that was brought out by Leave. And I think that that planning from Chara will be very important as other teams try to synergize in the early season. And it's going to mean that there's going to be time, potentially, for Neptuno to scrim half the time in the background and really become as trusted within the team calls as Chara is. Okay, and the fifth and final thing that we learned about the Guangzhou charge is that they probably need a new tank in the mix. They only have two, and it's going to be an intense season of traveling for every single Overwatch League team in 2020. And if you've got Krong and you've got Rio in every single match, that could be a recipe for disaster and for burnout. And thus far, Rio doesn't look like the best Orisa either. He's got good supercharge usage, but it feels like he's calling his halts in a less of an effective way as we rarely see Hulk combinations come out from the Orisa, and that's one of the best tools that the entire composition has to use against the enemy team, and if you're not getting value out of that, you're not getting as much value out of your Orisa. We know that Rio's got a pretty good Reinhardt and a pretty good Winston, but it feels like they could just have a little bit more flexibility in that main tank role. Okay, so in conclusion, it was a pretty disappointing showing for Guangzhou at Shanghai Masters, we would have expected them to get at least a map, especially after having beat the Chengdu Hunters on this meta before in the Overwatch League 2019 play-ins. Seems like the new addition still needs some time to synergize, so we could expect to see the Guangzhou Charge be a little bit weaker at the start of the season, and then start to build up that synergy and build up their strength into the later times. And it may well be that they actually introduced Chara at the beginning of the season while Neptuno is still synergizing with the team to try and have a little bit of an average, which is slightly higher when it comes to that coordination for movement, for disengages, etc., that you rely on with your main support. Once they get another tank, however, once they have an, a third tank or off tank in the mix, and I'm not so worried about burnout from Rio and Krong, I'm going to be very excited to watch Guangzhou charge in the 2020 season. Okay, my friends, that's all from me when it comes to what we've learned about teams from the Shanghai Masters Invitational Tournament. You can catch the other videos in this series on both my channel and on my colleagues. You can find Geo's video on the Hongzhou Spark, my own on the Shanghai Dragons. And after the publication of this video, Kenobi's going to be doing one on the Chengdu Hunters, which is sure to be interesting. So make sure you go and subscribe to their channels and have a look at their content. As for right here, you can subscribe to me. That'd be pretty nice. That'd be a swell thing to do for me. You can like the video as well. Leave a comment about what you think the Guangzhou Charge are going to be like in Overwatch League 2020. And I will see you guys next time.